Hello and welcome back to another episode of Best Bets. I'm Matt O'Leary and joined by Joe Maniello. Joe, how are you doing today? Good, Matt. How are you? Doing pretty good. Uh, made up a little bit of ground this past week, but you had yourself a nice week as well. You were uh, four and one, which brings you to seven and three on the year, and I went three and two, which brings me up to uh, four and six. Yeah, it was, good. it was a good week last week, which is funny because I thought it was gonna, I thought it was going to be a really tough week, but uh, it worked out well. Yeah, that's right. I remember before we picked, you were saying that uh, you didn't, you weren't in love with any of the spreads. But uh, how are you feeling this week? A little bit more confident. <laughs> It's the exact opposite. I think every, almost every game is like a good, a good. Uh, only a couple games that I think are tricky, and but it might be. It's usually a scary thing when you like when you like so many spreads. It usually is a bad sign that you might have a bad week. So I'm a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, usually that that tends to be true. So uh, let's start with the the Giants because they have themselves a new quarterback. Daniel Jones is taking over as the starter. They're heading down to Tampa Bay in order to take on the Bucks. The Bucks are favored by six and a half. Who do you like in this one? I like the Giants in this game. Um, six and a half points, is, is, in my opinion, is way too much. Even if even if Eli was in there, I just don't. I mean, the Bucks had a nice win at, at Carolina Thursday night. I was surprised. Defense has played really well, but I just thought James James Winston is too inconsistent. I just think that's too many points. You know, if they win by three, you know, even if they win by seven, I would not be shocked. But I think it's going to be a close game. I think Daniel Jones is uh, was the right was the right call. Nothing against Eli. Just that the Giants need to see him play, shake things up, a one-two team. I think him and Barkley are going to run a bunch of uh, read option plays. That, that's that's the reports out of camp. Uh, Shermer's going to you know mix things up, take a different approach with a more mobile quarterback. And I, I like the Giants uh, not to actually win this game. I think the I don't, I, Tampa Bay just doesn't scare me, and I think the Giants. The biggest thing in this game is for the Giants offense to be on the field as, as much as possible because that defense has been brutal. They, they've given up 63 points already, nine touchdown drives, and if the Giants can get you know keep keep the their defense off the field and have long drives, pick up you know big chunk plays with Barkley and Jones, I like the Giants to pull this one off uh, in an upset. So give me the points and uh, outright upset Giants by three. Okay. I'm going to agree with you. I also think the Giants cover. I think they definitely have a chance to win this game as well. If they are going to win one, I I think, you know, riding the momentum of Daniel Jones, he had a really solid preseason. uh, So it would not surprise me at all if he won this game. And I I just feel like that'd be a cool storyline, too. uh, If he came in after, you know, replacing Eli Manning and had himself a really nice week. I expect them to rely on Saquon Barkley a ton just because it'll make it so much easier for the rookie quarterback, whether it's on simple checkdowns or just, you know, running the ball traditionally. Uh, But I do think they feed Saquon a lot. And I don't love this Buccaneers team at all. I know they beat the Panthers, but the Panthers really don't do much for me anyway, especially if Cam Newton's banged up. So I I think they come back to earth a little bit and, and the Giants either keep it close or win. I think this is a field goal game and could go either way. Yep, so we agree. Okay. How how about Jets and Patriots? We have a massive spread, Joe. Twenty two and a half. That's insane. Are you are you taking the Pats with the minus twenty two and a half? Oh, without a doubt. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but this is the first. This is the first um, time since nineteen eighty seven, according to ESPN, that there have been two teams getting at least twenty points. The Dolphins are getting twenty one and a half at Dallas. I mean, if. If Donald was in, obviously the line would be much smaller. But even if he was in, I mean, the Jets just have so many injuries. Mosley's hurt, uh, Quinn and Williams, and uh, they say Tremaine Johnson might not play again. It's just been a disaster. Uh, the, the bye is week four. I, w- I wouldn't blame uh, Coach Gates if they asked for the bye for this week too, a double bye, because <laughs> they're going to get. Cr- I think they're going to get crushed. I mean, the Patriots beat the Steelers by thirty at home. Then they beat the Dolphins by 43. And so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, 22 and a half when you're, when you're betting a game, you're picking a game, it sounds like so much. But and there's a reason why that line is, is, is that high. I mean, they're starting the third string quarterback, Luke Falk. They have no really big receivers. I mean, and then was out. They have one guy in Anderson. And, I mean, Bell's great, but, you know, he's, what are they going to do with one guy? I just, uh, Belichick does not like the Jets. I don't think he's going to. You know, last week they played uh, his old defensive coordinator from last year, Brian Flores, and they won 43 nothing. I don't think he's going to, you know, slow down against the Jets. So I see this game like 38-3. to I mean, I can't see the Jets even scoring a touchdown. And even if they do, I, I still see them losing by four touchdowns. So I think you lay the points and you don't even think about it. No, I, I know I'm going to put you on the spot now, but you mentioned that you don't think the Jets scored a touchdown. Do you know when the last time the New York Jets scored a touchdown in New England was? 
off the top of your head? Well, well it's a good question. I mean, I don't know exactly, but uh, I know that they haven't. I know they've been shut out. <laughs> Not shut out, but they, I know they lost in the last three trips there. They lost 41 3, 26 6, and like 38 3 or something like that. So it's been at least four seasons. So, uh, <laughs> It's 2015. It's 2015. It was a Chris Ivory pass from uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and uh, there, you go. there you go. Yeah, and uh, Devin Smith was on the field too, so that gives you some insight to how long ago it was that the Jets actually scored a touchdown in New what England. Team, what team is he on now? I think I heard him last week. He, he is on Dallas. Touchdown. Yep, he is yeah, on yeah, Dallas. Dallas. Yep. I think he caught a touchdown last week. He did. Yeah. So it just goes to show you how much they've struggled over the last three years. I think those struggles continue. Again, I, Luke Falk looked better than Trevor Simeon this past week, but I just can't see this going well at all. I think you're looking at a 38-3, 42-6, another one of those kind of games where it's just going to be an ugly one. And like you said, we know Bill Belichick doesn't like to take his foot off the gas, so I think the Patriots cover this with, with ease, and which seems nuts at 22 and a half. <laughs> It does, especially week three. I mean, I can see that line in like week 15, week 16 when the team has nothing to play for, but week three, it's just crazy. No, it absolutely is. I think if, it's, I, it's, the right, it's the right line. Like, I, I take the Patriots minus like 25, 26. I mean, I, I even close to 30. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it's just the Jets, how are they going to score any points? And the Patriots, you know, they're at home. So there's, you know, only seven more home games. And, you know, the fans are crazy. They're not going to like. You know, be content with winning. You know, fourteen three. They, you know, they want to put on a show. They're not gonna. They're not gonna <laughs> care about the Jets being in a disarray. No, and anytime Belichick can stick it to the Jets, he loves doing that. So exactly. I, it's gonna be a blowout. I agree with you there. Okay, so moving on to the game of the week: the Ravens on the road in Kansas City. The spread in this game is six and a half. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, this is a great game. Uh, they, they played last year, week fourteen. Ravens had them beat, and then Mahomes had that crazy fourth and nine pass to Tyreek Hill, and then they kicked the field goal, or no, they scored a touchdown to force overtime, and they won an overtime 27-24. I see the same kind of game, back and forth, but I think, uh, I like the Ravens getting the six and a half. Obviously, you want you want the seven against a team like, you know, with uh, Mahomes, because they score so many points, it's their home opener. I think the Chiefs will win, because it's their home opener, and they have Mahomes, and, you know, they have a the defense, defense is definitely uh, suspect. I think the Lamar Jackson is definitely going to have success throwing on them this year. So I think it's going to be a shootout, like a 34-31 kind of game. But uh, I think the Ravens could even win this game. But the fact that it's the Chiefs' home opener, I think they'll hold on, find a way like they did last year. But I like the Ravens a lot. And uh, John Harbaugh is one of the best coaches. His defense always shows up. And uh, I think it's going to be a great game. So give me the Ravens plus 6.5 with the possibility of the upset. But I'm not going to pick, pick it out right Okay. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you. I like the Chiefs in this one. Uh, to me, this is the home opener for the Chiefs, so I think they really want to put on a show for their fans. Uh, Andy Reid, as an offensive mind, is an absolute genius, as we know. That's why he's still you know, doing it for this many years. Uh, the Ravens team, I think, is slightly overrated. I think people are a little high, too high on them because of the two teams they uh, beat in Week 1 and Week 2, the Dolphins and the uh, Cardinals. Nothing to really write home about there. But with Kansas City... They started a little bit slow this past week against uh, the Raiders, but I think they win this game by maybe like 10 points. I'm going to say like 34-24, something like that. Yeah, and I definitely agree that they're – I don't think they're overrated, but I mean I don't think – you can't – you have to you know, you realize who they beat, the Dolphins and Cardinals. And the Cardinals actually played them really well and almost had a chance at the end. But I just think that based on last year, like the, the reason I like them is, is, is the matchup from last year and knowing that they went in there, you know, a few months ago, almost won the game, and Lamar Jackson looks like he's you know, improved this year as a passer. So I think they're a live dog in this game. Okay. Um, how about for a best bet of the week? Who do you like this week? All right, so last week I had trouble even finding one game. <laughs> this, week, this week was the exact opposite. I, I feel like I could have picked from like ten games. I mean, I like the Patriots and the Cowboys, obviously, but I don't want to take that as the best bet. There's too many points. It's just you know, it's too almost too easy or in a way too difficult because it's such a big number. But uh, I like the Vikings a lot, giving eight and a half at home against the Raiders. I think they can crush them. But those kind of lines are weird because you know, if you're up by fourteen late and then uh, they score a cheap touchdown, you don't get the cover. So I went with uh, a small line. I think this game is going to be not lopsided, but I, I just love the matchup for the Colts. Home opener, giving a one and a half against the Falcons. I think the line should be three, but it's it's lower because I think the Falcons just won on Sunday night. They beat a team in the Eagles who the public loves to bet, and people are probably betting the Falcons because I think the line opened at two and it's down to one and a half. 
I just love the Colts uh, home opener. The last time they were there was the uh, Andrew Luck uh, retirement, you know, press conference after the game, preseason game, he was getting booed. Now they come back. They, they easily could have been 2-0. They almost beat the Chargers on the road. Adam Vinatieri missed two field goals and an extra point. And then they went in, and, and uh, when people were doubting them. They, they went at Tennessee, which had just won at Cleveland by 30. I think the Colts, the, the run game with Marlon Mack and that great offensive line, I think they're going to have a ton of success against Atlanta. They're dealing with some injuries, and uh, the Vikings just steamrolled them in week one. And I think the Colts will just follow the same blueprint and uh, run the ball down their throat and win by at least a touchdown. Okay. You convinced me on that one. I'm going to go with the Rams on the road, minus three against Cleveland. To me, through the first two weeks, I know they beat the Jets pretty handily, but uh, that's not really saying all that much. I think. You know, I was high on Cleveland this year, maybe not as much as you were, but I really like them a lot, and I'm a little disappointed with them. But to me, I think this is a no-brainer that the Rams are going to go in to Cleveland and, and win that game. Uh, they're a better team on paper to begin with, but with just how underwhelming Baker Mayfield and Freddie Kitchens have been through two weeks, I'm going to say uh, I'm pretty confident in that one. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, I wanted to take the Browns because, you know, they're my Super Bowl pick, but... Uh... They haven't looked that great. I mean, they beat the Jets, like you said, but it wasn't that impressive. It's the one big play to Beckham. Uh, Mayfield looked off. One thing about the Rams, I think it's a great pick. Uh, they're 14-3 and on the road with Sean McVay, so they always show up, and I think they're going to win by at least a touchdown. All right. And how about an upset for this week? An upset. So a lot of, a lot of choices this week. Uh, I went with the Lions for getting six and a half. I don't know if they're going to win the game. But I, th- I mean, I think they can win the game, but, you know, we just go with the points for the, the underdogs. So Lions getting six and a half at Philly. Lions should have been two and zero. They should have beaten the Cardinals. I actually was low on the Cardinals, uh, low on the Lions going into the year. So they, they've surprised me. But um, the Eagles are banged up. They got tons of injuries. They, I heard that they didn't, didn't even hold a uh, practice this week, uh, the other day, because they oh, had wow. so many injuries. And I mean, the receivers are hurt. The defensive linemen. And I mean, people just you know going into the season, the Eagles are a popular pick. So I don't know if people you know people betting on these games 100 percent realize that you know how banged up they are and. Uh, also underestimating the Lions, they just beat the Chargers. They have um, Eagles have given up the sec- Eagles has given up the second most passing yards through the first two weeks, 340 yards a game. And Matthew Stafford, as you know, is you know really good quarterback, underrated. He's got Kenny Galladay, deep threat. They got Carryon Johnson, good running back, and uh, they got that tight end out of Iowa, Hawkins. I can't remember his full name. Yeah, T.J. Hawkinson. T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah, but um, I just think the Lions are uh, going in there a little confident. They're one zero and one. Probably didn't know they should be two and zero. It's not for that meltdown against Kyler Murray in Week One in the desert. So I think I think they could win this game, but uh, to get six and a half, I think that's a great line. And I think it's a great bet. Yeah, I agree with you too. I think the six and a half is way too uh, big of a spread there. I, I I don't think they win, but I think the Eagles maybe win by like three or four points. So yeah, I'm. I, I agree. Yeah. So for me, the upset that I'm going to go with is uh, the Cardinals plus two and a half against the Panthers. To me, the Panthers uh, have looked really bad the last couple of weeks. Cam Newton's probably not going to play in this game. And if Kyler Murray is to get a win here and Cliff Kingsbury, you got to think it's going to be against a team that's pretty banged up and that's been underwhelming. And it helps, too, that the Cardinals are at home for this game, too. Yeah, it's a good pick, uh, in my opinion. When, when I first looked at the Lions, I always looked at the Lions, you know. I guess Sunday, you look ahead to next week, because, you know, you, you love the NFL, you can't wait till next week, it's hard not to look ahead. Right. But um, I was thinking Panthers right away, because I was like, you know, they look so bad, that that's how it usually works. When a team looks so bad, the next game they, they look great, and you're like, what, how, how did that happen? Right. That's how, that's how it works in the NFL. So I was going to take the Panthers and be one of my most confident picks, but the whole thing with Cam Newton's injury, and it doesn't sound like he's going to play. And uh, I don't know if the Cardinals, you know, the Cardinals are a tough team to figure out because they looked so bad in the first three quarters against Detroit, but at fourth quarter comeback, and then last week they looked pretty good at Baltimore. I mean, they kept that game close, so yeah, I think I think they should win this game if the new one doesn't play. Yeah, I'm right there with you. So. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, week three in the books. Joe, I want to thank you so much for coming on, and we'll do this again next week. 